Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. Today we have resective osseous surgery in uh, periodontology. It is a surgical uh, methods which is used to correct the bone deformities. So the damage resulting from periodontal disease manifest in variable destruction of tooth supporting bone. So we know the periodontal disease is the cause for loss of supporting bone. So as the disease progress or when it becomes severe, the ultimate result will be the supporting uh, bone that is alveolar bone destruction. So the most common uh, pattern of uh, destruction is it could be a horizontal one or vertical or most often a combination of these two horizontal and vertical. So the horizontal bone loss which is the most common pattern and usually associated with supra bony pockets. So there are two types of pockets supra bony pockets and intra bony pockets. So intra bony pockets are pockets uh, which is uh, at an angulation. Supra bony pockets are which is present above the alveolar bone and the attachment and bone loss which is proceeds at a uniform rate on majority of tooth surfaces. So in the picture you can see there is a bone loss which is at a uniform rate. There is no uh, unique uh, or there is no oblique destruction or oblique pattern of bone destruction in any of the teeth. All uh, are at a uniform uh, rate of bone destruction or a uniform level. So it is almost like a horizontal line. So everywhere it is horizontal. So the horizontal bone loss uh, it is the most common pattern. The equal loss of bone happens at all levels or all sides of the tooth. Whereas a vertical bone loss you can see a depression here. The bone loss is not at a horizontal level or not equally at both sides or all the sides. So you can see a special uh, trough like area here that is a depression which is caused by loss of bone. So here it is uh, horizontal and sudden depression is there. So it is occur in an oblique direction leaving an hollow trough in the bone along the side of the root. So a trough like area is caused this is known as uh, intra bony defect. This is within the bone not like a supra bony defect. So base of the defect located apical to the surrounding bone and accompany a intra bony defect. So the surrounding bone is this one. So this is located apical to towards apex apical to the surrounding bone or the nearby bone. So these intra bony pockets or vertical bone loss classified on number of osseous walls present. So how many walls it involves classifies the vertical bone loss or intra bony pocket that is could be a one wall defect, it could be a two wall defect or a three wall defect. So the picture says the one wall defect can see the picture here the only wall which is affected is a distal, distal side of this tooth is affected and this is a tooth whereas the two wall defect is a distal and lingual this is a distal and this is a lingual so distal and lingual is affected whereas a three wall defect distal lingual and facial okay the distal lingual and this dotted facial so these three walls are affected and sometimes a combination type of osseous defect. So the facial wall is half the height of distal and lingual wall. So this is an osseous defect with three walls in apical half, three walls in the apical half. So apically it is three walled and the two walls in the occlusal side. Okay. So at the towards the, we are talking about the bone. So the occlusal or the Mm, uh, coronal side of the bone the two wall defect is present whereas the apical side this side so this side it is three wall defect 
okay so this is uh, we are talking about infra bony defects so these are the pictures of uh, bony defects you can see the wall defect the mesial uh, sorry the facial uh, distal and lingual walls are affected similarly here so usher surgery can be defined as a procedure by which changes in the alveolar bone can be accomplished to rid it of deformities which is induced by the periodontal disease process or other related factors uh, such as exostosis and tooth supra eruption so it is nothing but a surgical procedure which helps the tooth to uh, bring back its uh, normal position or to correct the deformities uh, the deformities which is uh, caused by the exostosis or tooth supra eruption or any other periodontal disease process so usher surgery basically uh, divided into additive or subtractive types so additive or regenerative usher surgery you can see a picture over here before and after one year picture you can see the bone loss and you can see the bone formation here so it includes procedure directed at restoring the alveolar bone to its original level so that is a regenerative osseous surgery or additive so you're bringing back uh, the lost bone okay so bringing back the normalcy so how it was before the uh, periodontal disease so we are bringing back the or trying to bring back the bone level to uh, the normal rate or the original level so it implies regeneration of lost bone and re-establishment of the periodontal ligament gingival fibers and junctional epithelium at a more coronal level you can see it is towards more coronal side okay here the uh, defect is almost at the apex so after one year there is deposition of bone periodontal ligament and all other similar uh, attachment fibers junctional epithelium at a more coronal level so bringing back to its perfect normal uh, level is quite not possible but to a more coronal level uh, than the deceased level is a practically possible way of uh, managing the disease so that is additive or regenerative osseous surgery whereas uh, the subtractive or resective osseous surgery which is uh, designed to restore the form of pre-existing alveolar bone to the level existing at the time of surgery or slightly more apical to this level okay you can see the defect here but we are removing a portion of the bone towards more apically okay so it is to restore the form of pre-existing alveolar bone to the level existing at the time of surgery or slightly more apical to this level we are bringing well, this is subtractive we are removing the bone okay or resective osseous surgery so what is the goal of osseous resective therapy it is to reshape the marginal bone to resemble that of alveolar process undamaged by periodontal disease it is not exactly bringing back to its original shape and form it is to resemble that of alveolar process okay so you can see the damage here bone here so we are bringing back to or resembles to its normal alveolar process so this conversion of a periodontal pocket to a shallow gingival sulcus so there will be deep pockets so we are creating a shallow gingival sulcus which enhances the patient's ability to remove plaque and oral debris from this dentition okay so if it is a very deep pocket there will be deposition there will be accumulation and there will be inflammation leading to periodontal disease if the pocket if the deep pocket is made shallow then it will be a more of a self uh, cleansable area or the patient can easily do cleansing uh, using the brushing techniques or any other 
uh, adjunctive techniques uh, like uh, mouthwashes and other techniques. So, so the normal alveolar morphology. So basically, uh, normally the position of bony margin which mimics the contours of the cemento enamel junction. So it is almost uh, in a similar uh, pattern of CJ. Then distance from the facial bony margin of the tooth to the interproximal bony crest is more flat in the posterior region than the anterior. And the scalloping of the bone on the facial surface, okay, there will be a scalloping on the facial surface which is due to the tooth and root form and also the position of the alveolus. So anterior tooth and the posterior tooth, uh, it's different uh, scalloping of the bone will be there because of its positional change. So the interproximal bone is more coronal in position than the labial or lingual bone and it is pyramidal in form. So teeth with prominent roots or those displays to the facial or lingual side may also have fenestrations or dehiscence. Dehiscence you can see the complete denudation of bone. This is a focal denudation of bone. So loss of a focal area. This is complete loss of facial bones. It is due to the uh, prominence of this root or the displacement to the facial or lingual side okay it is due to the positional change now let's see what is a positive architecture negative architecture and flat architecture positive architectural where the radicular bone is apical to the interradicular or the, sorry the interdental bone this is the interdental bone okay so the radicular bone is more apical to the interdental bone. Negative architecture is a interdental bone. Okay, this is interdental bone is apical to the radicular bone. Here the radicular bone is apical to the interdental bone. Here the interdental bone is apical to radicular bone. Flat is reduction of interdental bone to the same height as radicular bone. So procedure used to correct osseous defects have been classified into two groups osteoplasty and ostectomy. So methods of osseous resective surgery is fundamentally an attempt to gradualize the bone sufficiently to allow soft tissue structures to follow the contour of the bone. So osteoplasty is a reshaping of bone without removal of the tooth supporting bone to achieve a physiologic gingival and osseous contour whereas the ostectomy or osteoctomy is a removal of tooth supporting bone here we are reshaping the bone without removal of the bone but in ostectomy we are removing the tooth supporting bone so osseous reshaping is basically uh, definitive or compromising so in definitive the osseous reshaping would not improve the overall result whereas a compromised which indicates the bone pattern that cannot be removed without significant osseous removal that would be detrimental to the overall result. And what are the indications? Okay, so the indications there should be one walled angular defects, inconsistent bony margins shallow crater formations, reverse architecture, buttressing bone formation, ledges and plateau, furcation defects, crown lengthening for restorative dentistry and it is contraindicated in anatomic factors uh, such as proximity of the roots to the maxillary, sinus, age, systemic health problems, improper oral hygiene, there is high caries index, extreme root sensitivity, uh, severe bone loss, unacceptable aesthetic results or existing mobility. So all these are disadvantages, sorry, uh, contraindications. In advantages, uh, the predictability, complete elimination of periodontal pockets and obtaining an ideal bone form. And loss of valuable supporting bone and post-surgical mobility, gingival recession, uh, and its sequelae and lengthy unpleasant post-surgical recovery. 
so these are the disadvantages and the factors which is uh, involved in selection of resective osseous surgery are the depth and configuration of bony lesion to root morphology and adjacent teeth and amount of bone which requires uh, removal extent of the loss of attachment the number of remaining walls of bony defect and amount of soft tissues which is present interproximally these are the instrument used to various uh, burrs and chisels files and the steps there are four steps vertical grooving radicular blending flattening uh, of interproximal bone and gradualizing the marginal bone so the step 1 and 2 uh, will come under osteoplasty and 3 and 4 is osteotomy this is shaping of the bone this is osteotomy is removal of the bone okay so vertical grooving is the first step in osteoplasty so these four are continuum uh, or continuous or one by one steps but the first two uh, is like a shaping of bone so it, it is known as osteoplastic procedure this is osteotomy procedures so vertical grooving is designed to reduce the thickness of alveolar housing so this is how we do vertical grooving we create grooves okay so provides continuity of the interproximal surface onto the radicular surface it is the first step which is performed with rotary instruments carpet and diamond burrs which indicates uh, when it indicated when there is thick bony margins and shallow crater formation and areas that require minimal osteotomy okay so minimal osteotomy we mainly do vertical grooving so we create uh, grooves okay so that there will be a continuity uh, at uh, interproximal area towards the radicular surface contraindicated when there is a uh, close roots or thin alveolar housing we cannot uh, do vertical grooving and radicular blending is a second step which is continuation of first step so to gradualize the bone on radicular surface to provide the best results from vertical grooving because we already done vertical grooving here so we just uh, do the blending so that it becomes a smooth uh, surface so it indicate uh, indicated on uh, when, when there is a shallow crater formation or thick osseous ledges of bone on radicular surfaces or class 1 and early class 2 percussion enrollment and contraindicated in when radicular bone is thin and if there is a fenestration and if vertical grooving is very minor now we are into the osteotomy which is the plastic removal of radicular and interradicular supporting bone to eliminate osseous deformities which is indicated when there is sufficient bone remaining for establishing a physiologic contour without uh, attachment compromise no aesthetic or anatomic locations and elimination of interdental craters uh, are indicated intra bony defects not amenable to regeneration horizontal bone loss with irregular bone height and moderate to advanced furcation involvement so contraindicated uh, contraindicated in advanced lesions and large hemiseptal defect uh, might require removal of uh, inordinate amounts of bone to provide flattened architecture and uh, when there is effective alternative treatment this is contraindicated so the third step or the first step of osteotomy or the third step is a flattening of interproximal bone that is requires removal of very small amount of supporting bone so we are making or we are doing osteotomy or we are removing small amount of supporting bone that is indicated when interproximal bone levels vary horizontally okay when there is changes in the interproximal bone in a horizontal direction indicated mostly for hemiseptal defects that is one walled defect and uh, next step is or the second step in osteotomy or the fourth step 
in uh, surgery that is a gradualizing the marginal bone it is a final step that is a bone removal is a minimal uh, but necessary to get sound regular base for gingival tissues to follow so if failure to remove small bony discrepancies on the gingival line angle such as if, which is known as widow's peak which allows tissues to rise to a higher level than the base of the bone lies in interdental area so if uh, if you are not removing the bony uh, discrepancy on the gingival line angle so this is a gingival line angle okay so you know the gingival line angle when there is two surface meets there will be a line angle so this gingival line angle if we are not removing the bony defect at the gingival line angle what happens is this is known as widow's peak okay these line angles the bony di discrepancy which is seen on the line angles so if we are not removing then what happens the tissues to rise to a higher level than the base of the bone okay so these tissues will go to a higher level than the base of the bone lies in interdental area so this interdental area bone loss uh, is there so this tissues uh, which is going uh, at a higher level because it has a small bony uh, area in the line angles so it will create uh, problems at the interdental area that is gradualizing marginal bone concept so reduction of one wall angular defect so angular defect mesial to the tilted molar so how do we correct it we can reduce the defect by ramping the angular bone we can just make the bone as a ramp so that it makes easy uh, for cleaning or the accumulation or deposition uh, of uh, bacteria and debris can be easily removed making a ramp of bone so reflection of the flap reveals a bulbous contour of bone and after this osseous resective surgery it is removed similarly a palatal exostosis is removed and the flap placement and closure so flap position and suture to cover the new bony margin or they may be positioned apically so we need to uh, position using a suture so this is apically positioned with the margin set osseous crest and this is periosteal sutures flap placement at margin at the level of osseous crest so post operative maintenance is very critical uh, in prognosis so non resorbable sutures removed after one week of healing and resorbable sutures maintain wound approximation for varying periods of 1 to 3 weeks or more at the suture removal appointment dressing is removed and surgical site is gently cleaned of debris with cotton pellet and tampened with saline sutures are then cut removed if any excess granulation tissue present should be removed with a sharp curette and post surgical maintenance instruction should be given so it takes uh, attachment of flap to underlying bone usually 14 to 21 days and maturation and remodeling up to 6 months so we need to wait 6 uh, weeks after completion of healing the last surgical area before beginning the dental restorations okay so finally to conclude this osseous resective surgery is a specific approach to recontouring the bone used in conjunction with apical flap positioning that requires precise surgical technique and it is limited to the treatment of moderate bone loss in teeth with adequate residual root in relation to bone volume so it results in formation of a healthy periodontal attachment apparatus so that is uh, all about osseous uh, surgery the basically we need to learn this uh, four steps that is osteoplasty and ostectomy vertical grooving radicular blending flattening of interproximal bone and gradualizing marginal bone 
its indication contraindication advantages disadvantages so osteoplasty and ostectomy is commonly asked question or osseous resective surgery could be a question and fenestration and dissens is due to the positional change of the root so these are the basic two types additive and subtractive okay so that's all about uh, the osseous uh, resective surgery and also the horizontal and vertical bone loss okay so i'll come up with a new topic in the industry and more thank you